Hello Salemites, welcome to your daily dose of days, weekly recap and updates. This is for Monday, um, January the 2nd to Friday, January the 6th. Uh, I apologize, I keep saying of, uh, December for some reason. Okay, so, um, when we left off Friday, of course, uh, Gabby had just busted up her own wedding because she remembered everything, uh, that Roth had told her. So, uh, she, um, she had, she's already headed off to Miami, uh, to tell Stefan what is going on. So, Lee Chin is spiraling out of control. He's back in his hotel room. On Gabby, Gabby, answer the phone. Let me explain. You know, leaving all kinds of messages for her. And, um, you know, uh, Wendy does make it over to see Lee and try to console him. And he's like, I thought you said I was on my own. And she said, well, you are, but, you know, I am your brother. I'm, I'm your sister. <laughs> She's not his brother. I'm your sister and I love you. So... She's over there trying to comfort him, and he says, um, she says, uh, he says to her, do you think I'm a monster? And she, and she said, well, Stefan's alive, so I would like to think that you changed your mind and plugged him back in, that you didn't really try to kill him. And he explained to her that Kristen had actually came in, and she was the one that did the replugging, so good try trying to think something good of your brother but he's a monster he's just a monster in love uh people will do go to any lengths for love or for being hurt by love you know who many many people sitting in prisons now because they got been out of shape over some type of love triangle or something gone wrong somebody done you wrong song Anyway, um, also what we see is Monday is, is New Year's Eve in Salem. I know it was Sunday for us normal, regular people in the real world. Uh, but for, in Salem, it was Monday because we had Christmas Eve Friday. So they were kind of Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve. See, there I go. I'm Christmas. I'm stuck in Christmas. In Christmas town, I am. So, um, I'm crazy. Anyway, um, it's New Year's Eve. We're taken back up from New Year's Eve. And we had a few people kissing under the mistletoe that we weren't expecting to kiss under the mistletoe, like uh, Johnny and Wendy. They had a little kiss on New Year's Eve. Wasn't under the mistletoe. It was under the midnight New Year's Eve folklore or whatever you want to call that traditions tradition that's what it is it's a tradition so um they had a kiss and they were both surprised by it and they both liked it so all of a sudden they're like oh oh so you're into me like i'm into you yeah and we all already knew that so uh, i like wendy and johnny as a couple um I hope that works out. I'm afraid there's going to be problems there because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with Lee. He could be going to prison. He's he's in a desperate situation. And when people, extreme people, get in desperate situations, very bad things happen. Like, look at Ava. She's an extreme person. She got in a difficult situation to get revenge or not to get revenge. And, uh, you know, it just happens in Salem a lot. So this is a really power-packed week, so you want to stick around for all of it if you didn't see it. Or if you haven't saw the uh, shorts that I've made all week long. Um, so we see uh, Wendy and Johnny kiss on New Year's Eve, and Nicole and EJ kiss on New Year's Eve. And... Um, they're taking it into the bedroom. And again, like I said on my short, 
I kept thinking, well, it was Susan's bedroom that she's staying in. So that's the bedroom they went in, I'm pretty sure. And, um, it was getting, it was getting hot in there, I'll tell you that. But then Nicole says, no, we've been down this road before. And we just kind of use each other because the people we really want to be with, you know, they're doing something else. You know, she said, we've been down this road before. It just didn't work out. And she said, I'm trying, going to try to in the new year not repeat the mistakes I've made. Good for you, Nicole. Finally. Try doing the anti-skank anti lifestyle for a while. But, you know, is she a skank or not? Because, uh, I, not really. She's just looking for love. I mean, she's just looking for love. So, and I mean, she's already tried to love everybody in Salem. And then she's, she's already done the second round with some of them so man she needs to start thinking twice about that crap um so they were getting jiggy with it but it didn't go anywhere wendy and johnny there. stephanie and um what's his name alex oh he's getting on my nerves as of late so we'll see about that what's going on there i'm having a feeling he's gonna blow it with the steph you know she's like a plus you know and he was up there but you know he's fallen down that ladder pretty quickly uh gabby she gets to miami she busts in on stefan and chloe and they're into the sheets and you know fixing each other's hair and painting each other's toenails and stuff so um <coughs> they're under the sheets and gabby busts in and they're like you know what like Stefan said, what in the heck are you doing? Except he didn't say heck. I gotta get a drink. I gotta get my straw in my big mouth. Tiny, tiny straw for my great big mouth. It just doesn't make sense. They should have straws. Big straws for people with big mouths. Uh, that, I was just talking about myself, man. Don't get your panties in a bunch. Okay, so, um... Chloe is like, you know, she's like, uh, well, Stefan's like, how'd you get in here? And she's like, well, I had to go to the front desk and show them my ID and prove to them that I was your wife and I needed to get in this room and they gave me the pass, you know, the room pass that you just saw one. So, um, she's like, well, is your husband somewhere in this hotel and can you go be with him? We were kind of busy. And she's like, no, right after I said I do to Chit Lee. I started to remember what Rolf said, and she told she told them both. She was telling them everything Rolf said. So they get up out of bed, and uh, Stefan goes and puts some pants on, and uh, he's just you know he's he tells her, you know she's like oh yeah I'm done with Lee you know, he's he's history, and you know and even Stefan said he said well I'm sorry about that, but I'm here with Chloe, and she said I need you to get dressed and come with me, because we need to go find Rolf and have him brainwash you back to where you loved me you know fix you back to where you were in love with me and he said no it doesn't matter to him he doesn't have any feelings with her that he's there with Chloe and they just had a very special night if you know what I mean <laughs> that's cold no the kids won't be able to figure that one out so, um, <coughs> I apologize. I've got like, if I was a cat, I would say I had a fur ball. No one's smoking around me. I don't know what's happening with my dry, dry throat. Anyway, um, they just want her out. So they get rid of Abby. Stefan literally is pushing against the door to push her out. And, uh, she's still banging on the door. Well, you know, Stefan says, you know, if she keeps this up, I'm going to call security and have them remove her. So, Chloe is very unnerved by all this because she's bothered that the only reason he cares about her is because he was brainwashed and made to care about her. So, she doesn't know how good of a situation this is. And, um... Uh, <clears throat> 
And she tells Stefan, I think it would be a good idea if you just get your own room. Because he offered to do that earlier. Because he knew she wasn't ready to, you know, fix each other's hair and paint each other's toenails under the sheets. So, <laughs> I'm just goofing off. So, um, <clears throat> he says, okay, you know, if that's really what you want. Well, when he goes out of his room, Gabby's out there and she's like, well, good. Let's go. We got to get on a plane and go find Roth. And he told her, I'm not going anywhere with you. I'm with Chloe. So, um, you know, they didn't show any more of Gabby. And what day was that? Monday? I don't think we see any more of Gabby for the rest of the week. Gabby, Gabby or Lee. But we got bigger fish to fry. <clears throat> Am I having an allergic reaction to something? What the heck? So, um, Chloe's understandably upset. This is just such a bad situation. I mean, look at all the people that got hurt in this whole little shenanigans that Lee, Roth, and Kristen cooked up. Or sh maybe it's not a shenanigan. Maybe it's a witch's brew. <clears throat> okay, uh, Eric and Brady's plan has kicked into action. Kristen is is a little bit hysterical. So, uh, meanwhile, back at Sloan's apartment, she here she is on New Year's babysitting and caring for Rachel. And her and Rachel are having a lot of fun. Rachel, Rachel doesn't know anything's, you know, not on the upside anymore. So... You know, she's a kid. She thinks she's having fun. Her Uncle Eric is there most of the time. And uh, she seems to get along well with Sloan. So, I think that would be so cool if Sloan and Eric got together and had a baby. I think they're both missing that, that connection in their life. And I think it'd be good for them. And I love Sloan. So, uh, she's smart, she's savvy, and she's beautiful. <clears throat> like just about everybody on the show. Okay, so we're going to move on to Tuesday. So Alex thinks he's having this dream about Stephanie and he wakes up because he hears a voice and he wakes up and Leo is in his bed and Leo's saying, Wintergreen, that's all you have is Wintergreen. And you know, uh, Alex is like, what are you doing? Get out of my bed. <clears throat> and he's like, well, I come to borrow some toothpaste. Then I can't start my day without minty fresh, fresh breath, he said. <laughs> so, uh, I love Leo. He's hysterical. I was hoping after all the trouble he got in that they didn't write him off the show somehow. Because, I mean, this part was made for this actor to play it. He is Leo. And when someone plays a part that good, you really just, just want them to stay with it. Because... You know, you enjoy enjoy what they're doing there. So, um, you know, Alex and him have several words. And he says that, you know, Sonny's out of toothpaste. And, you know, uh, Alex got like, uh, why don't you go uh, ask Maggie or something? Oh, no, Leo said, uh, oh, no, Alex said, why don't you go ask Victor? And he's like, Victor, oh, no, he'll throw me out. And he said, maybe I'll ask at, get, at Maggie if she's got any. <clears throat> they had words. The only person that is okay with Leo staying at the Kicks mansion is uh, Sonny. And he's willing to chuck it all to help his pal out there. Okay, so uh, Stephanie takes some uh, gifts over for Charlotte and Thomas. And, uh, <clears throat> Chad's like, yeah, I know, I called in work today, I'm taking the kids roller skating, and she's like, oh, that's fine, I'm just stopping by to drop off a couple of gifts, and tell them how much I like that CD that they gave me. And he's like, oh, wow, well, come in. They were so excited to see Stephanie, and she told him, maybe you can open these gifts when you get back from ice skating. Did I say roller skating? Uh, I meant ice skating. 
you know, I roller, I used to roller skate. I was like a professional roller skater. I was so good at it, you know, when I was growing up. And I assumed that because I could roller skate, I could ice skate. That is not the case. Although I would say I think it helps you. What I could do on ice skates is skate backwards. But I couldn't stay, skate frontwards without falling. What kind of craziness is that? Uh, so, um... <clears throat> Ice skating is very different. I feel a lot less stable in ice skating, but I love to watch ice skating. You know, when they have all the competitions, the Olympics and stuff. Oh my gosh, I can watch that for hours. They make it seem so easy, don't they? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, they're good at it. <clears throat> I know from learning to roller skate, but that takes a lot of practice. Uh, and I practiced a lot with the ice skating and I could not do the frontward thing very well. Backwards, I could go to town and back with with five of my best friends, but could not do it frontwards without my skates going east, west, and every other place in between. <clears throat> okay, so she goes over, and uh, the kids are so excited to see her. They're like, why don't you come ice skating with us? Yeah, 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 we'd be so much fun. You know, they love their cousin, Stephanie. Well, she was their mama's cousin. And, <clears throat> you know, you always like hanging around people that were close to the person that you just, that just passed away. That's been my experience in my life. And it's no different with the kids, I guess. So, of course, you know, Stephanie being the sucker that she is for these kids, um... She says, sure. She'll go She'll go ice skating with them. And so they do. So they go ice skating. But apparently, she had some kind of meeting scheduled with Alex earlier in the day. And um, <clears throat> her and Alex have been getting really close. And she called and left a message with Alex's assistant that she wouldn't be, she would have to, they would have to reschedule that meeting. Uh, so anyway, she come up to take a break on the bench, and Alex just happens to be walking by. I think they're at the park, or isn't there a, a lake, or the docks, or somewhere? I'm not sure where they're ice skating at. <clears throat> it looks like they're in the park. And then Alex walks by, and he's like, hey, Stephanie. And she's like, oh, hey, Alex. And he said, uh, she said, what are you doing here? And he said, your assistant said I could find you here. And she's like, oh. And he's like, uh, he's like, we had a meeting this morning. Did you forget? And she said, no, I called your assistant and rescheduled it or told her I wasn't going to be able to make it. He said, well, I didn't get that message. And he said, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? Who are you here with? And then up walks Chad and Thomas and Charlotte. And he's like, oh, you know, and, um, you know, the kids want to go back and skate, and Chad's, you know, talking to Alex a little bit, and uh, <clears throat> Stephanie thought they were getting closer because, you know, he invited Chad to stay and play video games. Was it on Christmas? Yeah. So, um, she said, I've got this. You all catch up, and I'm going to go take the kids down here to skate. So, um, she goes down there and they're talking about how you're doing and, uh, all this blah, 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 yeah, yada, 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 nonsense. So, uh, he says, um, Chad says, look, man, I, I'm sorry. This is all on me and the kids. The kids were just begging her to go ice skating. And of course, you know, she was going to go. And, uh, Alex is like, oh, okay, that's fine, man. I understand. And he's like, you know, it's holidays, they miss their mom, you know, blah, 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 blah. And uh, he said, well, Chad, I just want to make sure that you und we understand each other here. Now, you do know, or you are aware um, of uh, that Stephanie and I are together now. And Chad just looked at him. And, you know, and when if you were ever trying to read somebody's mind, it's really your own mind. And I was looking at Chad thinking, the way he was looking at him, Chad is... He is such a good actor. He 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 looked at him like, "What's the matter, you jealous monkey?" You know that's the look he gave him, the jealous monkey look. You know the one like, 
Like, that's some weird stuff, dude. So, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, Chad went on to reassure him that Stephanie and her were just friends and there wasn't anything else. And he said, uh, he's like, really, Chad? It's, it's not anything else. So what's going on here? Just a little family time. You know, he, Alex thinks that Chad just comes up with uh, reasons to pull Stephanie in. And he really doesn't. These things just happen. It's called fate. Alex, he's getting on, he's getting on my poop side, so, um, better watch it, Alex, I was liking you, so, um, <clears throat> anyway, he's sitting there giving Chad the business, and, you know, if you don't know what the business is, you're not old enough to know, so, um, Stephanie steps out of the trees and says, um, uh, what are y'all doing or something, you know. Uh, she overheard some of the stuff that Alex was saying to Chad, and she did not like it. So uh, she told Chad one of the mothers was watching the kids uh, because they were wanting him to come down and skate with them, and she told him she'd come up and get him. So uh, he said, well, I better get down there then. And so he goes on down to skate with his kids. And uh, Stephanie says to, to Alex... What in the hell do you think you're doing? Oh, potty mouth. What in the heck do you think you're doing? Except he said the other word. She said the other word, and he's just looking at her. She gave him the business. Again, the, the business is adult code. So, just in case there's any kids sneaking watching Days of Our Lives videos, <laughs> like there is, uh, that's adult code. So, anyway, um... <clears throat> I don't, I don't blame Stephanie. I, I think that he is getting a little... She told him that he had no right to pick her friends. That he was not going to pick her friends. And that, um, you know, she couldn't t tell him what to do. He couldn't tell her what to do. You know, and he apologized. And she said, how, how many times do I have to tell you that there's nothing between me and Chad? And that's when he has a little disagreement with her. Trying to tell her, you know, well... It seems to me like Chad just makes up all this stuff to pull you in. And she said, he's grieving his wife. And he said, yeah. And his, their kids, the kids just lost their mother. And Chad is my friend, so I'm helping a friend out. You know, and, uh, you know, Alex was not, uh, he's not sympathetic about this, man. He's, uh, he's, he's straight up, he is straight up controlling of Stephanie or trying to and that's not going to work And but see there's going to be something else going to blow them up I think I'm hoping that Allie or Chanel turn up pregnant and this is going to be Alex's baby and that's going to throw a wrench into things now if they don't turn up pregnant you know that's, a, that's just a bad phrase she's going to turn up pregnant how do you turn up pregnant you just flip her over like a hamburger oh look she's pregnant no uh, you don't turn up pregnant. You find out you're pregnant. So, um, I'm watching. I'm, I'm hoping one of them are with child. And, um, that would be interesting. I think when Stephanie finds out that those three got together to paint their toenails and fix their hair, and they actually did that, then, um, I think that might put a wrench in it for Stephanie and Alex. But I hope not, because really, Stephanie has no reason to get mad. They weren't a couple, and she kept blowing him off, like, every day. And it wasn't just a little blow. It was a big blow. She's blowing him down the street, man. Blowing him off. Like, get out of here, clown. So, um... Also, on... Yeah, we're on Tuesday. Maggie is, um just found out. Maggie comes in. She's all happy. Uh, Justin and I keep wanting to call her Adrian because it is Adrian, but now she's Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie are, you know, in the whatever, living room, Paula, 
whatever that big worm is. And uh, she comes in and she's all excited. She said, well, yes, I'm in a good mood. I think I found the perfect apartment for Xander and Sarah, you know, that they can afford on what they make now. And which Xander is a big fat zero. You know, get a job at McDonald's, man. What's wrong with you? So, um, they said, we've got some bad news for you, Maggie. So, they told Maggie all about the fake, um, fake company was just Xander's name spelled backwards and Gwen helping fake it up because, you know, she was helping him cover up the fact he didn't want Sarah to know that he could not find a job because it made him feel like a loser, man. He couldn't take care of his family. And you got Victor over there egging him on. Victor's a little pain in the butt. So, um, you know, Maggie's like, okay, okay. Well, Sarah walks in and says, well, that's not the only thing he lied about. And she goes on to tell everybody how Xander was the clown, the person that kidnapped Bonnie and Susan. And they just can't believe it. And Bonnie, of all people, is having trouble believe it, believing it because she's seen the clown in the same room with her and Xander. And she said, no, that was some kind of accomplice. Com accomplice. That wasn't him. I mean, I overheard him saying that he did it to, you know, his little buddy Gwen. So I think she's thinking that Gwen might have been the clown. That's what they're all thinking, actually. So uh, anyway, um, Maggie's just in on horror. You know, she's trying to get Sarah to calm down a little bit, you know, because Sarah's wanting to divorce him. So, um, what's his name? Leo comes in and says, hello, my lovelies, what did I miss? And they started telling him what was going on, and Sarah said, you're friends with Gwen. Do you know anything about her dressing up in a clown suit? And he said, I can honestly say I know nothing, I, I don't have any information about it. Gwen or knowledge of her dressing up in a clown suit. So, you know, he was telling her the truth because it was him that dressed up in the clown suit, not her. Okay, uh, Maggie, she tries to comfort Sarah, and that's when Sarah tells her she's going to have to divorce him. Maggie tries to talk her out of it, you know, saying don't just, you know, do something you're going to regret. And Sarah told her, Mom, I'm not like you. I can't just forgive anything and go on. You know, he's the reason that Susan Banks is dead. Had he not kidnapped her, that woman would still be alive. And, um, you know, Maggie tried telling her, you know, well, Victor wasn't perfect, and I had to accept some things, and I did because I loved him. Sarah don't care about none of that, man. Right is right, and wrong is wrong. And you walk the line if you want to be with me, Birdsong. And that that's her little thing there, and that's fine. That's her right, and she can do that. So, uh, I don't blame her for not wanting to be with Sander. I mean, he wears a dress, a skirt, a kilt, um, which is their culture, and that's fine. But I'm just going to tell you right now, I would not date a, a man who wore a skirt. I don't care if it was a kilt. I don't care if it was their religion. I don't care if God told him to wear the skirt. Because, uh, you know, even Christians back in the day wore, wore big like things like gowns I mean so what I'm just saying I'm not going to be in this day and age man I would not be dating somebody in their little kilt I can't do it I, I wouldn't be able to take my eyes off their little skirts I can't do it I mean I respect their culture and everything that they want to do and that's great I'm just saying I'm not doing it and I'm not dating anybody that does it because you know I'm not going to switch over how I believe for their beliefs I'm just not and, you know, you really need to be willing to do that to be in a relationship with someone if y'all have extreme groups that you belong to one way or the other. So, you know, whatever. I don't even know what I was saying. Okay, so, um, yeah, Stephanie got on, uh, Xander, uh, Xander, Alex bad. I mean, I'm surprised she didn't break up with him. Um, now there's a lot that's hap that has happened with the two or three things that I just said so now I'm going to have to go back over that um, 
okay, oh, Sonny and Will make up. Now, Tuesday, a lot of Tuesday's show was about Sonny and Will and them bickering back and forth. And Sonny just was trying to you know, express to Will that he is friends with Leo now. He knows he don't like him. He knows he's done despicable things to everyone, but he believes he's changed. And he's his friend now, and Will don't have a right to pick his friends. And uh, Will said, that's fine, you're right. I don't have a right to pick your friends. And I won't pick your friends, but I do have a right to say who, who lives with us. And I don't want him there. So they agreed that Sonny would still be friends with Leo and if he wanted to. But Sonny has, has to find Leo another place to live. And I thought that was a reasonable... Uh, meet in the middle kind of road thing but they had a, they spent a lot of time talking and I have a hard time getting into any of their storylines because n neither one of them are actually on the show for very long periods of time before they go off for something else probably making movies at Peacock <laughs> did you see that one? Peacock is shamelessly ha they are all the time mentioning stuff about Peacock now if they get paid extra for that more power to them but if they don't, I wouldn't be saying that crap. So, <laughs> I mean, that's what that's what Will was, uh, Sonny was telling Leo about Will not coming home for the holidays. He said, oh, Peacock wants him to make another movie. He's making another movie for Peacock. You know, <laughs> I was rolling laughing because that so didn't belong in there. So I hope somebody got some extra kickback from that because... I would have been furious them putting that in my scene. Man, you're you're a million dollar company. Go peddle your little your little icon somewhere else. I mean, but you know, there are there are peacock shows, so it was funny. There's been several references. Uh, Bonnie was talking one day a few weeks ago to Maggie and she was talking about uh, was it Xander and Justin or Justin and Sonny, how they were I don't know if they couldn't find them or whatever. And she said, uh, Bonnie said, oh, gosh, I found them the other night. And they were going head to head over who who, who, who was going to watch what on Peacock. You know, they're like plugging it a lot. That makes me think they're not doing so well over there. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know. I like it being on Peacock myself. It's because I can watch it when I want. I don't have to wait till 1 p.m. every day. Um you know, you, you can stop it and start it, you know, which you can't do if you watch on regular TV. But the downside is, of course, a lot of people got left out. And I'm very sorry about that. But I am going to be giving away some stuff on this channel. I thought I might try giving away a smart TV like once a month, just a small one. And uh, to help somebody, some of the older people that got, you know, thrown under the, wind, the bus thrown off the cliff, left in the mailbox, whatever. So, um, and then I thought, you know what I should do is give away the Roku kits because as long as they've got a semi-updated TV with an HDMI port, they can plug this little Roku stick in and uh, have them a Roku smart TV and add that, add that on for 4 or $5 a month. So, and there are lots of towns, areas, cities that have free internet for elderly or disabled people. So if you fit in that category, then you might want to be subscribing so you can have a chance to win a Roku stick and remote. So that's what I'm going to give away, some Roku sticks and remotes <clears throat> on top of some bracelets I'm making specifically for the Days of Our Lives characters and things going on. Uh, I've got one I've been working, well, the main one I've been working on is an Abigail one, one for Abigail, and remembrance of Abigail, so, it's just little bracelets, it's not a big deal, but it is free if you're a subscriber, and I've already got a couple of gift cards, so I'm stocking up, waiting for my subscribers to find me over here, I should have started it on my other channel before I left, so, hmm. All right, I'm 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 off off the off the pavement again. Um, okay, so Will and Sonny make up. Yes, 
um, Leo runs as fast as he can to go where? To find Miss Gwenny. He's got to go find Gwen because he wants her to know. They're suspecting she was Mr. Clown. Mr. Clown, is this your clown car? Does this don't look like a clown car? <laughs> I love her. Uh, so, anyway, uh, I got distracted. Oh, I miss Susan so much. I really do. She was just... She doesn't even have to do anything to be hysterical. That character was made for her. Uh, so, um... Anyway, um... You know, Gwen's had a rough day. She don't even want to deal with him. She shuts the door on him and slams his foot in the door. So then she has to let him in. And then she said, well, at least there's some good news. You know, Sarah hasn't told anybody yet. We're not arrested. You're not arrested. Xander's not arrested. I think that's what she said, not Leo. And she said, so that's a good sign. And he said, well, I got news for you. Sarah is telling everybody. And she's like, what, what? And they think you're Mr. Clown. So, uh, oh, man, she's just stressing out to the Maximus. So, you know, they're sitting there talking. And what, what's this? What's that we hear? Oh, it's a knock at the door. Who's at the door? It's Rafe and Jada. What are they doing there? Well, they've come to talk to him about all the stuff that uh, Bonnie and Justin just told him about Xander and Gwen. And, um, you know, I don't know if that happened on Tuesday or not. I didn't write it on my notes. That don't mean anything. I don't write enough notes. I'm trying to keep my brain active to fight off any kind of dementia. It runs in my family, you know. Um, more than one person has had it. So, uh, if I just write down one line, I expect that to trigger the scene or whatever I'm thinking about. And uh, it doesn't always do that, especially when I'm older. So, sometimes I'm just sitting there staring out into space because I can't remember what I was going to say. So... I guess I need more than one line, but I might try for two. But that's going to be my limit. Okay. So, uh, Gwen tries to pull... What? That doesn't... All right. All right. So, Gwen is trying to... Pull Xander out of his funk. I think I've got my days messed up, messed up. You know, he's feeling pretty down and out. And she goes and tries to encourage him that, you know, he's he's the best. Yada, yada, yada. You know, you don't have any reason to be feeling down. You know, but he does because he does feel bad about Susan and Bonnie, who's got PTSD now for the rest of her life, more than likely. Um, so that's, I think that's everything for Tuesday. Hmm. Is that it for Wednesday? It is indeed. Okay, so then we move on to Wednesday the 4th. Rafe gets his divorce papers, and he's there at the station. And uh, he's talking to Jade about it. he's feeling kind of down. And, of course, he already sent the divorce papers to her to sign, Nicole. And this is just her sending them back. So, you know, she's trying to tell him, you know, if you're not sure, you know, maybe you should, she's going on. And he just takes out his pen and signs it. And he says, no, there's, there's no reason, you know, we're not going to get back together, he said. But, you know, I feel like such a loser. And, you know, you get to a point, you know, that you have to start looking at yourself after your fourth marriage. She's like, oh, wow, you've been married four times? Who has Rafe been married to four times? Oh, yeah. he. But wasn't he married to Hope? And it seems like he was married to Nicole before, but there's Hope, Nicole... He wasn't married to Ava. 
You know, Rafe, it looks to me like you're making some poor choices on your girlfriends. Getting involved with Ava? Crime princess. Mafia crime princess. Are you crazy? And then getting involved with Nicole, who's been with everyone in Salem times two. Oh, man, you need a good woman. And who's that good woman? Jada. That's who I think he's going to end up with. So, you know, she she uh, comforts him a little bit. He's, he's over it. He's moving on. And, um... Oh, okay. So, it's Wednesday. I did make a note of it. That Leo and Gwen stress out because... Rafe and Jada question them. Now, <clears throat> about everything that Justin and Bonnie were telling them. Now, he's telling Gwen, he's like, look, you know, don't, you know, we already know that you did this with the company. And he said, you know, and anything else you've done, you know, if you just want to tell us, I'm sure we can work something out. And uh, Leo's like, work something out? You know, and Rafe's like, yeah, well, it would be a shame for you do have to go down for something that Xander did. And Leo's just looking at her like, he's right, you know. He didn't say that, but that was the look he was saying. He did say something similar to that, I think, when they left. And they did end up leaving because, you know, Gwen, under no circumstances, is going to rat out her man. And she said, no, nope, sorry, I can't help you. I wish I could, but I don't know anything. So, um, there that went. <clears throat> Stephanie uh, it continues today with her get going off on Alex a little bit putting him in his place um, and he just stands with his belief that he believes that you know Chad is uh, you know manipulating her playing her you know Chad and his little family. Uh, yeah, is that everything for Wednesday? I think it is. That's my couple of notes for Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, I didn't write a lot down for Thursday. Okay, so... <clears throat> so... Um, Brady and Eric had the plan to kidnap Rachel to, you know, force Kristen to hand over the orchid. Meanwhile, the ladies are going to be needing the orchid, you know, like in the next 24 to 48 hours. So, get on it, boys. Um, so, um, they've got Rachel, of course. So, Kristen is hysterical. She doesn't understand why Brady's not hysterical. And he's like, I'm just trying to keep my head. He tells her to go lay down. We think she's going to lay down. But, of course, we know she's not. Because he's then talking to the, on the phone to Eric. And um, Kristen walks up behind him and she overhears most of what he's saying. So, Brady's like, well, I have to go. You know, she's standing right here. And... Uh, so he gets off the phone and he's talking to Kristen and she is hysterical. And I do mean hysterical. So, you know, they got into it. And he told her, what did you expect, Kristen? And she said, how sick are you kidnapping my daughter like that? And he's like, how is what I've done any different than what you were doing with Marlena? You kidnapped her to try to make us do stuff. You know, what you do. Um, John and Marlena are at a hotel. Kristen is off the deep end. John and Marlena are at a hotel and um, they're enjoying themselves because, of course, Brady shipped them off so Eric could watch Rachel and kidnap her. Um, 
Kalen Patch come home and um, Rex comes to the pub. Did I write that down? Oh uh, yeah, there's oh there's so much going on on Friday. Uh, Rex comes to the pub and tells, um, you know, Kate that he needs to do a, some tests on her just to prove, uh, to the board and stuff that the medication is still working. <clears throat> and, uh, that's when we get the bad news that the virus is back. Kalen Patch come home and, um, every, everybody's feeling fine, although... Kate has started to sneeze some, and so has Kayla, come to think of it. Roman tells them the bad news, and Kayla said, well, we need to go to the hospital, and you need to draw my blood and see if I'm in the same situation or what's what's happening. So that, that they go off to the hospital to draw Kayla's blood. Um, Sloan and Eric um, are having some words, and Sloan's like, I cannot believe you roped me into this and he's like I'm sorry and she's like you better be glad that I'm attracted to you or I would have done turned you in and he said hey what happened to client client privileges and she said don't push it and he said I promise I won't he's already pushed it uh, so she tells him that uh, you know we need to wrap this up now we need to get this taken care of this child needs to move on um, so Sloan um, kept trying to get Rachel to do a makeover so they did one and she was all pretty and stuff and then they came out and um, she's like uh, they decide they're going to do a makeover on Eric and it's hilarious I did a short in it with a clip from that so make sure you catch that it's funny He's got on blush and hair clasps in his hair. It's just hilarious. Uh, that's about everything for Thursday. Um, there's a lot going on on Friday, January the 6th. So, um, Kristen and um, takes Brady to the Orchid, which is stored in the basement of the Demera house. You know, that basement room where Leo hung out before while Abigail was being murdered and before he was hanging out when he stole her jewelry. You know, lots of people have been kept hostage there and stuff. Um, <clears throat> Eric, meanwhile, goes over to Brady's house. He's gone, of course, with uh, Kristen, but John and Marlena have just got back home and Eric spills the beans on what's going on and uh, tells them about he kidnapped Rachel and they're just looking at him like and uh, he explains all that to them and what's going on uh, filling them in it and John's like oh, I knew it I knew she was up you know and, and he's like so whose idea was it to take Kristen's daughter that, that's not good this is going to push her over the edge you know, she just got arrested for brainwashing her brother. You know, she doesn't have anybody supporting her. I don't like this. This isn't good. The, this this thing can go sideways so quick. That's what John said. So, um, Eric's explaining to him everything. So, they've got a grasp of what is, what is going on. And, um, all the girls are starting to go down. They all start with the sneeze, the infamous, infamous sneeze. And, um, Kayla goes down first. She's at the hospital and, um, uh, she's talking to Rex and Patch and she's like, they're trying to get her to go get, get in the gown, get in the hospital bed. And she's like, no, I got too much work to do. I've got to catch up. I've got patience to see, you know. And she tries to walk away, and she faints. And um, they get her in the bed, and she, and she comes to, and 
and she's doing okay. Um, Kate is telling um, Kate is telling um, <clears throat> Roman that she doesn't want to go to the hospital because you know if she's sick, if she's gonna die, she just wants to stay home. She doesn't want to go back to the hospital and go through all that again. I absolutely understand this. And people who are in their last stages of life, a lot of them feel that way. So, um, Chad walked in and said, well, what's going on? And Roman told him, you know, we need to get Kate to the hospital. This is what ha is happening. And Kate got up. She was going somewhere. And she ended up fainting. And Chad, Chad got her. Uh, so, um... Who called? Chad called Kayla at Roman's instruction. He said, call the hospital and let, let them know we're bringing her in. And uh, he called Kayla to let them know they were bringing uh, Kate in. That Kate had just, you know, fainted. And she's like, okay, well, we'll be waiting for her. You know, she didn't bother to tell Kate that she already, or Roman, that she already passed out and she's already in a hospital bed. So they're on their way with Kate. They get Kate to the hospital. Uh, <clears throat> of course, Kayla's blood work is almost identical to Kate's, and things are not looking very good for our gals. So um, Kate's talking to Rex. He's in the room with his mother, and and she's she says, uh, "I feel funny," and he's like, "What do you mean funny?" And she's like. I just feel funny. I feel different than I did before. She said it's a lot worse. It's a lot faster than it was before. And, uh... So... Um... Whew... Gosh, I'll be talking about one thing and then my mind just goes off on something else. And if I close my eyes, I can see the whole other scene. So I need to stay awake and uh, pay attention. Um, Chad and Stephanie are... Wait a minute, let me make sure. Oh, yeah. I'm going to finish this about Kate. So uh, Roman comes in and uh, he's with Kate. And uh, well, right before Roman came in, she told she told Lex, she said, R R Rex, Rex, can you do me a favor? And she, he said, sure, Mom, anything, what? She said, don't let me die here. Take me home. And as soon as he said that, Roman had walked in. And uh, she was like, oh, Roman, Rex. And they're like, yeah. And she said, I love you. And then boom, she flatlined. She died. She passed away. Rest in peace, Kate. Kate Roberts. Demara Karyakis. Brady. <laughs> I don't really... I, I'm not sure about what all of her names are. But I love Kate. You know, she's been on the show for years. Um, so, she's she passed away. She passed away Friday. Okay. Kate... Kayla is going down next and she is getting worse and worse. So, um, Chad and Stephanie are back at the skating ring because after she told Alex off, she said, now I'm going to go finish skating with the kids. So, you know, he, he left and, uh, she hurt her ankle <clears throat> And Chad massaged her ankle, and he might have wrapped it up for her. I don't remember that part. And then Alex calls, and Stephanie's in a good mood. She's not hating him or anything. She told him what she needed to tell him. Mind your own business. I'll be friends with who I want to be friends with. And you best be shutting up about it. So Alex wants her to, for them to go have dinner together, and she's like, sure. So she gets off the phone. She told Chad, I'm going to go have dinner with Alex. And he's like, well, have a good time. And thanks. And she's like, you know, she had a good time all, also, all this stuff. So she leaves Chad to go have dinner with Alex. 
she has to assure Alex again that there is nothing between her and Chad. But then, there's this. So she's limping around, and they're kissing and stuff. And, uh, well, they had dinner. They couldn't go to dinner where they were going to go. Something up at that restaurant. I don't remember what. But uh, they ended up having grilled cheeses and tomato soup. So she laid down with him on the couch. You know, her back against him just kind of snuggles. And uh, she says, oh, it's so cold outside. I, I don't even want to get up and go out there. And he said, why don't you stay the night? She's like, really? And he said, really? So they go up to the bedroom, which, again, I think is Susan Banks' room, even though it's in the Kediakis Mansion. Looks like Susan or Abigail's room there, man. I bet it's the same set. Uh, so, they go up there, Stephanie ends up, uh, she's limping, and he's like, did you hurt your ankle? And she said, yeah, well, I hadn't skated for a while, and a little rough on my ankle, and he's like, here, I can, I can massage that and make it feel better. She's like, oh, no, I don't need that, Chad already. And he's like, Chad massaged your ankle? And she said, it's not what you think. And he's like, all right, all right, you know, and then she goes in the bathroom. Well, so, uh, Chad is at the hospital, and, uh, is that where he sees Patch at, I think? Uh, and he's trying to find out what he can do to help, and Patch tells Chad, can you call Stephanie and tell her that her mom has took a time from the worst and she needs to get down here to the hospital, you know, that she's relapsed. Chad said no problem. So Chad's trying to call Stephanie. Her uh, phones are ringing, but she's in the bathroom. Who sees her phone? Mr. Controlling Pain in the Butt, Alex. He sees Chad's calling. He just hits that ignore button. Now here where I live, we call that button something else. And it's not the ignore button. <laughs> Uh, I noticed some phones just have decline on it. Mine, I think mine has decline. Uh, but his had ignore on it. So hers did. So he just hit that ignore button. And off Chad's call went. So I'm sure tra Chad tried to call her more than once. But we only see. Why is it freezing in here? Oh, I've got my window cracked. Uh, because... Um, Um, I forgot what I was saying. So, she's missing this call from Chad telling her she needs to get to the hospital because her mother's relapsed. Now, she, he'll call her again and again. What I'm thinking will happen is he will drive over to get her because it's that much urgency. So, um... Alex, is when he seen that phone call coming in, he thought, look at this dude, man. He's in love with her. He's just looking for a way to manipulate her and get her out of here tonight. So, you know, he clicked that ignore button. That might be the end of them. If, if that causes Stephanie to not be able to see her mother before she passes away, I'm going to be pissed off at Alex my own self. So, could his selfishness and his jealousy cost Stephanie to be able to say goodbye to her mother. Might do it. Okay. Um, is that it? That's it! That's it for Monday through Friday. The 2nd of January through the 6th. I know I took longer than usual. Ah, 59 minutes. Oh, I don't like to take that long, but I don't. There was so much going on, I hate to miss it. So we got a lot to look at. Like, is Stephanie going to forgive uh, Alex? I think she's going to be mad at him for a long time, if not break up with him. If somebody's little stupid insecurities caused me to miss saying goodbye to my mother when she was dying, I'd probably punch him in the face. Not really. I'm not a violent person, so I wouldn't punch him in the face, but I'd give him a good talking to. 
So, that's it for this week. It has been, oh, just a sad week. With, it looks like all the gals are going to go down and, and die. Now, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know good and well that Daisy are, are not going to take out three of its heroines. Especially three people that have been on the show for years. Years, man. Years. Decades. So, I don't know how they're going to get back to life. But I just know that they will. So, uh, whew, I can barely stay awake. What's going on? Uh, anyway, that's it. It's Saturday night. Have a good uh, weekend. Please subscribe if you haven't. Bring your friends over. Like I said, I'm stockpiling my stuff to give away. So once I get a few, few more people on here, we'll start with some polls and just randomly giving some gifts and things away and I will uh, see you all in Salem well maybe I won't uh, this might be a problem